sure it's recording. All right, we are here with Leanne Vogel. Is that right? Vogel, but close enough. <laughs> Vogel. <laughs> we got it. So you are running the Healthy Pursuit, right? Healthful Pursuit. Healthful Pursuit website, which is all about the ketogenic diet. And we right now in our little group are all about this fantastic ketogenic diet. So Leanne, welcome to talking to the On Track group. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's very exciting. And the winner gets to get a copy of this lovely woman's book. And by the end of this conversation, you're going to want it. There it is. 125 recipes. Yeah, awesome. 448 pages. This baby is heavy. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's great. Um, so Leanne, tell us first how you came about getting into a keto diet. What was your background and how has it helped you? Yeah, so I started being interested in nutrition. I was sitting on the couch eating a thing of broccoli and I had a headache. So I grabbed some Tylenol and I'm taking the Tylenol and my headache slowly starts to go away and I'm still eating this broccoli and I'm like, wait a minute. I just had Tylenol and it made my headache go away. But what did this broccoli, like what is this broccoli doing? And it was this first moment of like, connecting what I was eating and putting in my body to how it made me feel on a daily basis. And in fact, it might be very like, duh, and of course that <laughs> happens, but there are actually a lot of humans out there that don't make that connection. And so that yeah. was my first introduction to nutrition and, and how it can hold us back or pull us forward. Uh, so I started nutrition at CSNN back in 2007. I've been doing this work now for a decade and it's definitely evolved over time. And really where I, I just went to nutrition to help myself. And when I graduated, I was like, oh my gosh, I know way too much not to share this with the world. And that's where my blog started up. And my blog initially was a vegan blog and I was sharing like how to juice cleanse and oh how to like, God. <laughs> um, not cook with fat. I have a lot of recipes still on my blog today where it's like how to make hummus without using oil. This is a real thing. I did this. Um, but throughout this experience, there were a couple of huge signs that my body was saying were a problem and I just wasn't listening. Um, I had amenorrhea for a total of eight and a half years. So that's when you don't have a period. And I went to countless doctors that said, well, do you want to have babies? And I'm like, no. And they're like, well, then what's the problem? And I thought, okay, yeah, what is the problem? I mean, I'm a 20 something girl and I can, I was a marathon runner and a cyclist and I did triathlons. Like I was an athlete and I thought, well, how great is that when you do a race and you don't even have to worry about your menstruation? Like it's not even a problem. But what started happening when I was training is I wasn't building muscle. I wasn't recovering properly. I wasn't sleeping. Uh, it, there were all these issues. And so six and a half years into having amenorrhea, I went to a naturopathic doctor and she recommended a low carb diet. At that point, I was primarily eating plant-based high carb, like my breakfast most mornings. Oh gosh. was a huge <laughs> fruit bowl, like a salad bowl that you would serve a family of fruit with hemp hearts and honey on top. And then I would put quinoa and like cook quinoa and sprinkle it through. I would eat that, go to a hot yoga class on my way home, grab a juice and a smoothie and drink that. Like it was just ludicrous. And I wondered why I was having all these problems and with cholesterol. Even my cholesterol was actually too low. Um, that was one of the main reasons why I wasn't getting a period that I now know. So this naturopath recommended a low carb diet. I uh, found that I found the ketogenic diet shortly thereafter and thought, you know what? Why don't I just give this a try? What's the worst thing that could happen? And so I transitioned from that yes. <laughs> our Which, monstrosity. So, you know, like that, how many people would look at that meal and think, oh my God, this person's so healthy? Oh, like 95% of the population? Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, she's putting quinoa on her fruit. How brilliant. <laughs> like healthy and yeah. Yeah. And oh, it's just, sure. totally. And for some people, I'm not the type of um, nutrition educator or person that will be like, use my way, because every oh, other way is too. really bad. There yeah. are people that are significantly healthy by eating that sort of breakfast and having yeah. that sort of life. But yeah. I was not. And that's why I needed to change. And so I went on the ketogenic diet. It took me about two weeks to transition, which um, I now know is quite significantly fast. But 
I'm a Taurus. So when I commit to something, there's no like if, ands or buts about it. I'm just going to make it happen because I'm curious and I don't want to yeah. waste time getting to someplace. So, um, I tried the ketogenic diet six months. I was able to go off my ADHD medication. I went on it when I was about 11. So it was the first time where my brain was functioning optimally to the point where I could go off my medication. Um, I lost 12% body fat. Uh, my moods were a lot better. I no longer craved food, but I started dealing with a lot of pins and needles. My thyroid was acting up. Um, I was losing hair. I wasn't wow. sleeping. Um, I had zero energy. It didn't matter how much fat I ate or, or what I did. You know, I was reading all the books and flipping through things and I'm like, I'm doing everything right. What's wrong with me? Um, and I just kept losing weight and kept feeling not so awesome, but also awesome at the same time. It was yeah. really frustrating. Uh, and that's really where I came to a crossroads of like, shoot, okay. I kind of lost my way. I started focusing so much on my weight and not about my health. And then it was merging my holistic nutrition background with ketosis and the benefits of a ketogenic diet and also being a woman because many of the resources out there for ketosis is based on a man's 24 hour hormone cycle. Wow. So, okay. You know, women yeah. we're different. We have a 28 day hormone cycle. <laughs> so it's going to be different. Um, so I merged those two together. And after doing that through a couple of steps that I'm sure we'll chat about, um, mm -hmm. I got my period back. I've been ovulating and having a period now for uh, almost two years this September. So it's been quite cool to, you know, pave my own way when it comes to uh, not only nutrition, but also keto and educate specifically uh, women in this community and women that yeah. are wanting something more that there is a different way of approaching your nutrition, number one. And also number two is that it doesn't have to mean that the strict version of ketosis is the only way to do something. That's yeah. something that I've learned over time is that one way is not the only way to do anything. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. 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 And I'm all about that too, that everything can be tweaked to accommodate what your needs are. And everyone says, well, should I be doing this keto thing? Should I be doing a paleo? It's like, well, some people thrive on a vegan diet. Some people thrive on this and thrive on that. All you can do is try and see how it works for you. But I like that you, because I think in the paleo, the keto, and the autoimmune communities, we're seeing a lot of people that will thrive in the beginning, or they really they do really well, and then things start to deteriorate. And I think this is where your this missing piece comes in, where you have to look at a female hormonal system and say, okay, maybe this isn't the best, or maybe we're not diversifying enough, we're eating the same foods repeatedly. And I yeah. hear that problem with keto is that people will tend to eat just meat and fat and they're not getting all the variety of the vegetables and the yeah. feed the bacteria. Yeah, it's crazy. I've met people that have gone five plus years and not had any plants in their body. Oh yes. It's and so I'm like, bad. what? But no. I mean they're thriving. Like they're health like, if you look at their biomarkers and they're like really oh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, you just kind of got to roll with it. And when your numbers are doing something funky, then readjust. So I would think like a couple of years ago, I would have been like, heck to the no, you need plants. But I mean, we're so individual. And I think when we approach it of just, I'll follow this person's program and everything will be okay. That's when we set ourselves up for failure. And then yes. we go, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. And we're like, this isn't working. Screw it. I'm broken. I'm doing it wrong. When really it's, not you it's the program and it's the fact that you're not adjusting it to work for you if you don't want bacon in the morning don't have bacon <laughs> like exactly. i mean it sounds so simple but really it's not it's taken me 20 20 solid years to kind of figure this out yes, so. me too. yes yes and there's no I, i've been telling people in this challenge already like this is an opportunity to get to know your body like you really need to listen there's no hard and fast rules here if you feel hungry add some fat and see how it feels if you need to add some more vegetables in like protein you have to figure this out for yourself it's it's not an exact science exactly that's very true <laughs> so talk to us about the how long it takes to become the keto adapted 
Yeah. So keto adapted or fat adapted means that your body's now burning fat as fuel specifically. Um, it prefers fat as fuel. It knows that like carbohydrates, yeah, like who cares about them? And when you have carbohydrates, um, what I've discovered is that your body will burn through them and just get back to burning fat. So if you're in that fat adapted state, you can get away with having the carbs and jumping back into ketosis quite effortlessly. Um, so it, but you have to become fat adapted first before you can jump back and forth like that. It's true. Yes. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Exactly. You got it. Um, so for some people like my husband, it took him about four days to become fat adapted. It was just like, done. and probably lost 20 pounds. Yeah. Just like done. (laughs) Yeah. He put on jeans uh, a couple of weeks after he started keto and he's like, I think those are too big. What do you think? And I'm not even kidding. He could have fit another leg in there. And I'm like, what? What? Uh, And that's crazy. But I mean, women, we're supposed to hold more fat on our bodies, like hormonally. And um, so it can range anywhere between a couple of days to start noticing the benefits of keto to a couple of months until you're fully adapted. And that varies hugely on the types of foods you're eating. Um, If you're more looking at a whole food based approach, I find that that's more helpful and can actually help you um, adapt a lot quicker because you're not relying on artificial sweeteners and products that say that they're low carb, but actually they're not, or yeah. Coca-Cola and things like that that are just going to hinder your ability to fat burn. Um, for me, at, at around the 30 day mark uh, was when I noticed I had gone on a really, really long hike. I had climbed a mountain. It took me about seven hours up and down, and I didn't bring any food with me. I was just curious, like, what would this be like? And I got back to my hotel room. I was in BC. And I craved all of the fatty ground beef with coconut oil and macadamia nuts on top. And that's when I knew I was fat adapted because after such an epic workout of not having any food and the first thing I wanted was ground beef with macadamia nuts and coconut oil. And that was about 30 days. So that's because you're in DC. That's where we are. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's great there. So (laughs) Yeah, cool. Okay, so it can take an, um, quite a lot of, it can take up to 30 days, hey? Yeah, and I mean, I've met people, I was recently on a book tour, and mm-hmm. um, before I wasn't such a supporter of the exogenous ketone products. Yes, I've heard I you talk about that. feel like maybe um, people, I know that people abuse them a lot, and they think that if they just eat low carb and also take this, they can be fat adapted in like a day, woo. Uh, it doesn't work like that. But if you're having a hard time getting over that hump, you know, you've been eating keto for two, three weeks, and you're like, what was that Leanne girl talking about? I don't feel like eating ground beef. I just want a pizza with beer. (laughs) Then something like those products can be helpful to kind of kickstart that. But you should notice in about 30 days that you're craving more fat, um, that you're not as hungry. And if you're not, you kind of need to look at what are the foods that you're eating? What are the qualities of the foods? How often are you eating? Um, you know, are you counting calories? Is there a lot of dietary stress that you're creating? Um, because when we are stressed, when our cortisol has increased, it's actually going to hinder ketone production. So somebody could be eating ketogenic for a couple of months. And if they're going through a really stressful period, good luck registering ketones. Like it's yeah. not going to happen and you're not going to feel so great. So it really forces you to take a look not only at the foods that you're eating, but also the way that you care for yourself and um, the way you structure your days to be able to feel, you know, happy and healthy at the end of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, but I do notice like doing it myself, I definitely spent about three days of feeling like a bag of fucking shit. Sorry, but (laughs) I did. And and then I started to, f- I got the energy right away. So I don't know if I'm keto adapted yet necessarily, but I definitely, I've always followed a paleo low carb diet. So I don't think it would take me too long, but I definitely, would you agree that the energy certainly comes fast as far as that goes? Yeah. The energy came to me about two days in. Nah, no, that's a lie. Maybe like five days in. Yeah. Because I did too. experience a little bit of keto flu and I just felt a little bit off. Um, but then I started going to yoga and I had so much energy and even my teachers commented like, Whoa, where's all this energy coming from? But I was still craving carbs, um, thinking about carbs. Uh, so it took a little while to kind of get over that. 
Yeah. And so when it comes to the hormonal system, what have you found that was worked for you better? Because you said you started to lose your hair. So can you tell us kind of that's hormonal? <laughs> yeah, that's mega hormonal. So for me, I think it was definitely my thyroid um, with that. And I know that there's a lot of questions about, you know, is ketosis good for your thyroid, bad for your thyroid? Um, some are in the camp of yes, some are in the camp of no. I'm kind of in the camp of like, maybe. Uh, I'm like Switzerland. Is that the saying? Like, I'm not going to say yes or no. Because um, it's so, it relies a, very heavily on where you're coming from. What's interesting though is um, I was getting blood work a couple of months ago. Um, it may have even been longer, time flies. But, um, you know, I got the blood work and I was reviewing it with the doctor and he said, you know, this is high, this is low, this is perfect. And I'm thinking, yeah, but I mean, I've been in a ketogenic state for three years and you have to think that my panel is going to look different than somebody that is glucose fueled. It's just going to look different. And what's to say that that different is bad? Like the body functions differently in a state. I almost imagine it as being two different humans. Like when I was glucose fueled, I was a different human than I am right now. Yes. Um, yeah. So hormonally, some people find that their thyroid um, does funky things that maybe their TSH increases, uh, maybe their free T3 lowers, and then they get concerned. Um, I would say that if you are concerned about your thyroid, I would definitely listen to that. Some ketogenic people um, say that it's totally normal for that stuff to change. But if you know, and I've known for a really long time that my thyroid is my weakest link, that's where I'm going to show imbalance. As soon as those numbers get a little bit wonky, that's a concern to me because I know that I have a thyroid issue. Um, and you might have a thyroid issue and not even know it. And I think for me, the reason I was losing my hair on keto was because I wasn't eating enough. I was eating 1200 calories every day. I didn't care if I went to bed hungry or I woke up hungry, I would force myself to fast regardless. I, you know, I would eat between the hours of 12 and eight. And if I got home at like 755 and I couldn't get to the kitchen in time to make something too bad. So sad. So sad. You fail. Try again tomorrow at noon, even right. if I was hungry. And so I think we get into that mentality of like, well, if I'm registering 1.2 uh, millimoles per liter of ketones, if I just don't eat or I eat less fat, then I can get away with more and then I'll burn more fat. And that's just not the way it works. So I think for my thyroid, it was a multitude of different things of not eating enough. Um, forcing myself to fast and also not having enough carbohydrate. So when I first started that ketogenic diet for the first six months, I was averaging anywhere between 20 to 50 total grams of carbs. And as time went on, I went lower and lower. Like it started off at 50, then it went to 45 and then 40. And there at the end, it was around 20 grams a day. And your thyroid hormones actually need carbohydrates to convert. Yeah. Period. Like they need them. Yeah. And so if you're not having enough, they're not going to convert as well. And if you're compounding that with an already existing thyroid condition, um, it, it, it is going to affect it. But now that I'm incorporating what I like to call carb ups, which is more of a cyclical practice to ketosis, after I followed that for nine months, that's when I got my period back. That's when my thyroid got better. And now my numbers are pretty standard. Unless I, when I wrote my book, my thyroid was like, I hate you. Yeah, <laughs> um, it was sure. really stressed and uh, <laughs> stuff like that. But now that the book is done and I just get to chat with awesome people like you every day, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not as stressful and therefore my thyroid's better. So I think to answer your question, if you already have a thyroid issue and you know it's an issue, watch for it. And if you yeah. find like your thyroid gets a little bit funky, just add more carbs. And yeah. I think we just get caught up in the, the, the carb game where it's like keto is 20 grams of carbs, period. And keto for me isn't. I can eat no. 80 grams of carbs in a day and still be ketogenic. I registered 2.3 millimoles per liter of ketones. So I don't know what else I can do there. So <laughs> Which is awesome. So when you're saying that, because a lot of people don't know this, there is a way to measure your ketones to see what's happening. Yes, there is. Yeah. So there are three different ways to test. Um, there's like a fly in my office. I and see that. Yeah. To like hang out on my hair <laughs> and like, seriously, guys, uh, later. Um, so there are three different types of way to test. The first is through your urine. Now, the problem with the urine test, well, the benefit to urine tests is that it's pretty cheap. You can get them for a couple of dollars. You just stick your pee in it or put it in your yep. flow and you check. And if it's eggplant purple, awesome. You're invited to the party. Um, yep. it, 
normally what will happen is people will test eggplant purple, eggplant purple. They'll be like, yeah. And then one day they'll wake up and test and there'll be nothing. And they'll be like, what did I do wrong? And that's just because when your body becomes efficient at using ketones, it might stop dumping them into your urine. So mm -hmm. it's not a totally accurate way of testing. Uh, another way is breath test. I've been trying a couple of new monitor systems to kind of see which one I like best. The problem with breath testing is that you need to be really accurate with the way that you blow into the tester. Okay. Um, and you know, as soon as you get the machine, I advise you to sit down with it and test it and try to get the same number over and over again and then take note of how you breathe into it. Um, and these units are great because you only have to buy them once and then you usually don't need to buy them again. You just use the same tool. So it's a little bit more accurate than urine. Um, but the most accurate way to test your ketones is through your blood. And um, my husband likes pricking his finger. I find that hurts like crazy. Yeah, I be yeah it's painful. Yeah, it's so I just do the, the meaty part of my palm right here. Um, but I don't test too much anymore because I know what ketosis feels like. And I know when I'm in it, when I'm not, when I've eaten too many carbohydrates, when I haven't, it can be a nice tool when you first get going on your ketogenic diet, but yeah, um, I think so. yeah, the drawback to blood though, is that at least in Canada, like the strips can range anywhere between two to $4. So if you're testing your blood every day, that's a lot of money to test your ketones. Yes. So it's not as accessible for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But so a good tool to have, I would think, and if somebody is going to do it seriously and for a long period, then to get going and to see, like you said, not everybody's going to fall under that 20 grams of carbs. It would be a good identification of how much you could tolerate with still staying in ketogenic. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. And I mean, when you're first starting off, you can kind of get away with testing your blood. So if you're like, I cannot even afford blood monitoring systems and stuff, um, test your urine. See if you can get away with testing it for a little while until um, until you can't anymore and it doesn't register. Yeah. And how, if somebody's not going to do it that way, is there markers that somebody can judge whether or not they've become keto adapted? Yeah. So there's a couple of things that I, uh, always go for. Is my mind super clear? Can I go long periods of time without eating? Uh, do I obsess about carbs <laughs> or do I think about, you know, my next fatty meal? Um, that hangry feeling that you feel when you're using carbohydrates as fuel, it's more of just like, I need to eat right now. Like right now, like yesterday, I need to eat. Whereas yeah. in a state of ketosis, it's like, yeah, I can eat right now if you're eating. Otherwise, I could like wait an hour, whatever. Um, so those are some signs right off the bat that you could kind of determine whether or not um, you are becoming fat adapted. Uh, and then, you know, what when I was talking about, you know, doing that big epic mountain climb and then going back and craving fat that's a huge indicator um that you're fat adapted and ready to party nice yeah it just sounds like it's the it would feel so good to always be on this that's what i think <laughs> yeah i mean there's definitely a lot of benefits and then for women with hormones mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that say that you know a long state of ketosis actually isn't good for your body so that's why i offer a couple of practices where if you want to jump into carb burning because it's like your birthday and you want to have whatever, then, you know, you burn those carbs, you're fat adapted. So your body's going to burn through those carbs and jump back into fat burning. And um, some people agree with that. Some people don't, but I think it just comes back to like, if you eat the carbs and you feel better the next day, cool. And if you don't, then don't do it again. Um, yeah. yeah and you said you do carb, the carb up thing about once a week. Uh, yeah, it really depends on where I'm at in my cycle, I find, and yeah. also what I've done for activity. Like, for example, um, yesterday morning, I talked my friend and her, my friend talked me into doing a three and a half hour, like uphill hike. Um, and I didn't, I don't know what I was thinking, but so we did that. And then uh, I came home and that night I was like, I need a carb up. And it had been about three days since my last carb up. So Sometimes it's, you know, when I was healing my hormones, it was almost every night I was having just, and we're not talking about like pounding the cupcakes here. I'm talking yeah. about like half a sweet potato with dinner if you're doing it every day. Um, but for me, if I am on day, I want to say usually day 27 of my cycle is usually when I find I need more carbohydrates. 
So yeah. then I might be doing a carb up every night. And then when I'm ovulating, I don't really find that I need carbs whatsoever. Like I find I crave more protein. And so you really have to go with your ebb and flow of your body. Whereas with men, their hormones recycle every 24 hours. So every day for them is like a new day. But for us, our cycle continues for those 28 days. So, you know, if you're healing a hormone imbalance, like say your thyroid is really messed up, you're dealing with adrenal dysfunction, um, you might want to do carb ups more frequently. Whereas if you're dealing with inflammation or say autoimmune um, imbalances, you might want to do less carb ups because that might flare up your um situation for the time being so it's really like where you're coming from and that's what i tried to put in the keto diet well i did put it in the keto diet of like what are you going through which um approach to take with that uh so you can kind of determine what uh strategy might be best for where you're at right now in the beginning to get to that keto state should you not be carb upping like should you allow your body to like to be hard should you be hardcore in a hundred percent or is there room for this like 80 20 like yeah here there de- 30 yeah, days or just do it uh, so it depends on where you're coming from there are a lot of individuals that their current health status won't allow them or doesn't feel very comfortable going hardcore keto for the first 30 days like anyone who has amenorrhea or yeah. massive hormone imbalances. If you're dealing with something like fibromyalgia or like chronic fatigue, where if you eat the wrong thing or have a stressful day, you're in bed for the next three days, yeah. going through that ketogenic process of fat adapting and the keto flu that could last two weeks. Imagine if you had chronic fatigue and you were doing keto flu, like just no, like you just, you're, it's too much for your body. So that's why I developed, um, fat field profiles. So there's five in my book and one of them is daily fat burner. And that's just eating low carb, high fat all day so that your insulin is lower. Your, your mind is able to think and process and do all those magical things. And then at at dinner time, you're having a little bit of carbs. So it's going to take your body a lot longer to become fat adapted, but you also need to think of like the broader scope of, okay, well, if I were to eat hardcore for 30 days, like you're going to feel horrible and you're not going to be happy. And for you, it just might not be the right thing. So you kind of have to gauge also and be realistic. Like yeah. if you know you can't go 30 days um, with not eating a sweet potato and it's just not something you can even entertain. Okay, cool. Then don't yeah. do it. Like just start with something else. But if you're like me and you're just like go from plant-based eating to like, eating 20 grams of carbs and all of the meat in less than two weeks and you're that type of person, then see what that feels like. And the worst thing that can happen is that you eat some carbs. Yes. Right. Right. I mean, (laughs) and that's not stress about it. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. And also, you know, keeping mind of why you're doing this. That's also been really important to me is like taking a step back. It's like, do I really want that X, Y, Z? I know that it's not going to make me feel the best. And does this align with my goals? And sometimes the answer will be like, I know it's not going to make me feel good. And no, it doesn't align with my goals, but I want it anyway. And um, I think we beat ourselves too much up over that, that it becomes so much more about the stress. And then we can't get keto adapted because we're stressing about the I don't know, sweet potato we had last night and maybe it was too big. And it's just like, oh my gosh, seriously, I can't, I just don't have time in my life to dedicate to that anymore. No. And I have to ask because a lot of the people in the group and women in general, we do things primarily because for weight loss, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's unfortunate, but true. You could tell somebody that, you know, they, if they ate a hot dog every day, they're going to lose 20 pounds. They're going to do it. It's just yes. how women run right now. So when it comes to weight loss, man, what have you found for yourself and for people that you work with? Like what are, what is to be expected as far as like a paleo versus keto or vague, whatever, just other diets maybe versus this, what, yeah. can, what can we expect to see? Yeah. So if you are dead set on losing weight, um, you can definitely lose weight on a ketogenic diet. I did. I lost 20 pounds in two months, 12% body fat. I continued to lose. I looked great. I looked so hot. I had like six pack abs. It was great. It's you like, still look great. Come oh, on. Well, it's crazy because I weigh so much more now because I need to look, I, I need to be that way in order for my hormones. So I had to kind of step back and be like, wait a minute, (laughs) you know, like, 
although the six pack abs are great, I'm not all that happy. <laughs> and I'm also calorie counting every little morsel and it's just not um, helping my hormones. And for me, I just, I really wanted to have a period. Like I would dream about what it would be like to have a period. I mean, you go yep. eight and a half years without it and you, you just miss it. I know women thinking like, oh, I could live without my period. No, you couldn't. You would feel horrible. Promise me. Like, I promise you. Um, but coming from a paleo place, I think a lot of paleo people, and I was one of them, rely on a lot of paleo treats. <laughs> and I mean, I would go days and days and days, and it would be like lunch and a paleo treat and dinner and a paleo treat. Uh, so when you're having all those carbs and treats and things, um, it can also still spike insulin just as much as anything else. And when we have that spiked insulin, we're not able to burn fat. When we have lots of carbohydrates, we create a thing called glycerol that ports the fat into cells. So we're kind of working against the whole fat burning thing. But yeah. on a ketogenic diet, we're lowering that insulin. And also, we're not eating enough carbohydrates that we can even create the glycerol to, be mo to move fat into cells. So from a weight loss perspective, if you are really wanting to lose weight, if you eat ketogenic, low carb, high fat, focus on whole foods, and your body needs weight to lose, I can't see how you can't. I yeah. mean, there's definitely yeah. hurdles that you have to go through and overcome because I'm not going to sit here and say, if you just eat this way, totally you're going to lose weight because that would be a lie. And there's going to be problems just like there is with anything. And you just kind of have to deal with them as they come. Like, stress like what we talked about might be an yeah. issue you might have to look at that um, even your self-care routine can help with that or maybe you're putting way too much fat in your fatty coffee in the morning you yeah. kind of need to look at that or having too many carbohydrates in a thing that you think is low carb but it's not actually um, so kind of looking at those pieces but you know it has the potential to help you lose weight a lot quicker and more efficiently than other eating styles um, I would just urge you to kind of look at why you're wanting to lose weight if you think that your life is going to be better because you have lost all the weight it's a lie yeah. <laughs> if you think that your body can't be trusted that's also a lie your body wants to be healthy and balanced and whole and live a really really long time and that diet culture has told us that our bodies can't be trusted and that we know better than our bodies and so um, it's unfortunate that women and even men too, like my husband shares me things all the time of like how he's supposed to look and all these things that men are put under. And it's just unfortunate that we're told that if we lose weight or we look different, people will love us more and they won't have an opportunity to love us more because we'll be so obsessed with everything that we won't have a moment to take, to look around and see the people around us. So I think if you're just eating ketogenic, low carb, high fat, overcoming those hurdles and if your body has weight to lose it'll just lose the weight it'll just be easy which is really nice it is really nice yeah that's yeah. awesome that's a great message so just before we have to go here we're gonna run out of time tell us first of all what would a typical day of food quickly look like for you and then tell us where we can find you and show us your book one more time because i have a feeling that probably a lot of these members are going to want to run out and buy it now <laughs> amazing okay so um, it's interesting. I, when I first started a ketogenic diet and I started, you know, healing my body, I was eating a lot more. Um, now it's like three o'clock local time and I haven't even had breakfast or anything. And I'll probably just have one meal today, which is so cool and so freeing. Um, but yesterday I had one meal and that was uh, bacon wrapped hot dogs. Like they're organic, awesome hot dogs we get from the butcher. And I wrapped them up in a lot of bacon and I cooked them. And when you cook them, all the bacon grease runs off, which is so unfortunate because that's the best part. So yeah. then I sauteed um, like coleslaw, like just this um, coleslaw mixture we get from the market. Um, what else did I have on there? Oh, uh, and on Kevin's, I put mayo on top. We had that for dinner. Um, we eat a lot of like breakfast is usually either some sort of fatty drink, whether it be a smoothie or a rocket fuel latte, which is my kind of women's friendly approach to the yes, fatty I coffee. Post, I posted thing. that one for everybody. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, so there's that. Or sometimes we'll have breakfast usually around like 11 or so. Um, and Kevin always has eggs and bacon and he cooks his eggs in ghee and mine is usually some sort of high fat protein i really like ground meats because it's way cook, qu quicker to cook yeah um, and some sort of green like kale or salad with a bunch of olive oil or avocado oil on top um snacks or i mean i have 
one right here. Uh, I eat this Lakanto monk fruit sweetened chocolate. It's always at my desk. This is just a little pack <laughs> of snacks, and I'll put um, coconut butter on it. Kevin really likes ghee on his. Kevin is my husband, if nobody has a guest already. Um, and he eats keto too, so it's really nice because his approach to feeding himself is a lot different than mine. So I really like watching him just choose high fat foods that I would personally never do. He really likes prosciutto with mayo inside and he puts like two tablespoons of mayo per slice of prosciutto and I'm like oh my god I would never eat that it's so gross but um so yeah that's kind of a day in a, uh, a day in the life of us in our keto eating yeah. um yeah so you guys can find me on healthfulpursuit.com um here's my book again awesome. looks like this spine looks like this if you're looking at a bookstore um you can and get do, it and it's a guide it's not just a recipe book right yeah so the 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 recipes start around this part. So you can kind of see it's like half and half. Yeah. Um, awesome. And the guide is really about cooking and preparing food and how to kind of structure your ketogenic diet. Um, I made it this way because I already have two other books, The Keto Beginning and Fat Fueled, that talk about uh, the first 30 days of eating keto. And then Fat Fueled is about healing yourself with keto. So here I really wanted just to talk about the practical application to a nice. ketogenic diet. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking to us. It's been awesome. Yeah. yeah. And if we, if we continue doing keto in this group, then we may ask you to come back sometime in the fall. <laughs> I love talking, so I have yeah. no problem with that. And you're awesome, Karen. I would okay. love that. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. And we will see you soon. And I will uh, be buying your book soon for someone, whoever wins it. <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks so much. You're Good welcome. Luck, guys. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.